Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have x to the power x equals 2 to the power 3x plus 192. Now we're going to go ahead and split the expression on the right hand side first. So let's go ahead and write this as x to the power x equals 2 to the power 3x times 2 to the power 192. We're able to do that because if you have something like a to the power b times a to the power c, that is equal to a to the power b plus c. So when the exponents are added, you can actually write it as a product. Make sense? Great. Now, we separated these two things because we want to put everything with x on the left-hand side. So kind of like isolate the variable part and then have a constant on the right-hand side. Now, if you take a look at 200... 2 to the power 192, I mean, not 200, 2 to the power 192, that's such a large number, isn't it? If you don't think that's a large number, let me give you an idea what that looks like. So 2 to the power 192 is actually approximately 6.28, by the way, this is interesting, times 10 to the power 57. Wow, a number with 58 digits. All right, and what do you notice about the 6.28? Yes, it is pretty close to 2 pi. 2 pi or not 2 pi. Anyways, so this is a number with 58. It is a very, very large number, and you can kind of read it as 6 octadecillion. Octadecillion. Okay, such an interesting name, right? Anyways, that's a really large number, so that kind of makes guessing a little harder, right? That was actually one of the goals. So... Let's go ahead and put the x's on the same side because that's our goal. Uh, let's separate the variables and the numbers as much as possible. So for that purpose, first of all, I'm going to write the 2 to the power 3x as 2 to the power 3 to the power x, and that will be 8 to the power x. Make sense? Great. So now we have x to the power x, and I'm going to divide it by 8 to the power x, which comes from here, and that is going to equal 2 to the power 192. Again, this is a very, 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 very large number. Okay, but it doesn't matter. We'll handle it. So now we have the same exponent. So and other properties of uh, exponentials apply here. So if you have anything like a to the n divided by b to the n, that can be written as a to the over b to the power n. And vice versa, obviously, right? This works both ways. So now we have a common exponent. So we can go ahead and write this as x divided by 8 or x over 8 to the power x. And that is equal to 2 to the power 192. Now, our expression is a little better or equ the equation is a little better because now we have something that hopefully we're familiar with on the left hand side. And what is that? Right? We have an x in the base, we have an x in the exponent, but x over 8. So we kind of have to change this up a little bit so that the base and the exponents are equal. And then I'll tell you what to do from there because we're going to turn it into something we are familiar with and then treat it as a function, look at the derivative, minima, maxima, so on and so forth. So we'll do a little bit of calculus uh, with this and I'm also going to draw a graph of this situation to explain what is going on and then we will proceed with the solution. So, but uh, first we have to put it in a nicer form and for that I'd like to raise both sides to a power. So let me go ahead and move these guys a little bit. Uh oh, that's not what I wanted. Let's go ahead and uh, move these guys a little bit uh, to the right. So like this, separate them a little bit. Okay, that's good. Now we're going to raise both sides to the power 1 over 8. And where does that come from? Like, um, I'm pretty sure you're going to question it. But um, the idea is we have x over 8 at the base and we want to have the same thing in the exponent. And the only way to get x over 8 in the exponent, because we, has, we have an x, to get x over 8, you do need to multiply x by 1 over 8. Because x times 1 over 8 is the same as x over 8. Make sense? Okay. Dividing by a number is the equivalent to multiplying by its reciprocal. Again, the, this is a division rule, right? So now we're going to raise both sides to the power 1 over 8. Awesome. And then x and 1 over 8 is going to be multiplied just like here. And that's going to give us x over 8 to the power x over 8. 
Now that's good. You'll see in a little bit why. And on the right hand side, I'm going to have something like 2 to the power 192 times 1 over 8. So what is 192? 192 is 2 times 96, and that is 4 times 48, and that is 8 times 24. You see how I'm doing it? Double it, cut in half, double it, cut in half. This is a technique that's used for multiplying numbers. If the numbers are hard to multiply, you can kind of use this strategy. Sometimes it works real well. Anyways, so 192 can be written as 8 times 24, and that's going to be very helpful because if I write it like this, 192 replaced with 8 times 24, and then multiply by 1 over 8 because that's the exponent then the 8 and 1 over 8 is going to cancel out, leaving us with something nice. But we'll make it nicer. So now this expression is equal to 2 to the power 24. Notice that on the left-hand side, the base and the exponent are the same thing. But that's not the case for the right-hand side. So we're going to change this up a little bit. How do you change 2 to the power 24? Well, just think about uh, different ways you can factor 24. 24 can be... 1 times 24 is not going to help, by the way. So let's start with 2 times 12, or 3 times 8, or 4 times 6. Which of these is going to give you what you're looking for? Give it a try. Like 2 to 24, you can write it as 2 to the power 2 times 12. Then this becomes 2 to the power 2 to the power 12, which is 4 to the power 12. Obviously, that's not something you want. We want something uh, the same. So now let's try the second one, which is 2 to the power 3 to the power 8. And guess what? 2 to the power 3 is 8, so that's going to give us what we want. So now, to keep a long story short, we're getting the following from here. x over 8 to the power x over 8 equals 8 to the power 8. Lots of 8s, right? So this means, from a 1 to 1 correspondence standpoint, x over 8 equals 8 is a solution. It gives us a solution, but I'm not necessarily saying that's the only solution. We need to talk about that, right? A little bit. Okay, so from here we get x equals 64, which is kind of, like I said earlier, hard to guess, I'm thinking. Uh, maybe I'm wrong on that. Anyways, that's a solution. Are there any other solutions? Let's go ahead and do the following. Set x over 8 equal to t, and then define f of t equals t to the power t. Yeah, and then f of 8 is just going to be 8 to the power 8. So we have something like f of t equals f of 8. Does that imply t equals 8? Obviously, it kind of does, but is that the only solution we're getting, right? So for that purpose, we're going to look at the behavior of the function f of t equals t to the t. If you differentiate it, I'm going to give you the derivative real quick. It's going to be t to the t times 1 plus ln t. Set it equal to 0, ln t equals negative 1 gives you t equals 1 over e. And that's actually the point where the function has a minimum because if you graph it, you're going to notice that it kind of looks like this. Starts at, you know, this is t and f of t, by the way. Starts at 0, 1 with an open dot. It kind of goes down and then goes up making a minimum at 1 over e comma 1 over e to the power 1 over e because this is the graph of t to the power t. And obviously 8 to the power 8 is such a large y value or f of t value that you're only going to have a single intersection point. Basically our function is going to be increasing on 1 over e to infinity therefore our number falls in that interval. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.